Okay, so in the previous video we built up the temporary LFS system that we're going to use to build the final system that will be usable. And we do all of this, build the final system in Chapter 8. Now a lot of this is repetitive, so I'm not going to comment on anything that I do unless it um, warrants it. So if it's something specific that needs to be done, or something a little bit different, um, other than that I'm just going to go through, record what I do, and I say just narrate where I think it's appropriate. So if we move on, and the process here is just the same as before, um, it's a bit of a description there. Oh, this SPU value is required to displace and test. SPU value has been calculated using a single CPU core for all operations. Okay, so we may find that um, SPUs given are um, outside of what we would expect because, as if you remember, I've set the make flags variable in this environment. So it should be completed a lot sooner than they would indicate. Um, but yeah, the process is basically the same. We're in the sources directory, extract the package, follow the instructions, build it, and when it's installed, just remove the package, uh, go back to the sources directory, remove the package, and move on to the next one. And as I say, most of these are just a case of following the instructions. There's a few packages where the build might be a little bit different, like need to do some checks, um, or tests might fail, expected tests might fail, and so on. Uh, but I'll comment on those as, say, as they come along. So I'll start with man pages and just go on and do every single package as they come along.
Okay, so that's finished testing and as it says in the book, the, a few failures out of 4,200 tests are expected and can be ignored. Um, I've got seven failures there. Let's see what they are. So I've got some test CPU features, CPU info, that maybe because it's got a modern um, Alder Lake CPU, it doesn't recognize some of the uh, features that the CPU has got, so I'm going to ignore those ones. Um, probably for the rest, same reason we've got these expect unexpected passes. Um, okay, so test Elch mod. That's expected, known to fail. Test TTY name, that's known to fail. And NSS test, NSS files, host, multi-test is known to fail as well on non-loop pack IP addresses. So we've got the three expected and as I say the four other ones it mentions CPU features and as I say I expect that's because of the um, very modern CPU maybe GLibc has not been updated for that yet so I'm going to take that as an acceptable pass and just carry on with the build So the next bit is about choosing a locale to install. Um, generally you want at least one, probably two. Uh, for example, I would select ENGB with that character set, ISO 859-1 and I'd also install this UTF-8 one as well. Uh, for the optimal coverage of all the tests that are due to come in other packages it recommends to install all of these um, to ensure that the tests pass uh, as best as possible so if you're building this for the first time might be an idea to do that or if you're building this with a view to creating a running system you might want to also install these to ensure that you've got confidence in the system that you're due to build in any case, whatever you choose to do, you need to run this, create this directory before you can create the locales. And what I'll do is just copy all these and paste them in. You'll, if your locale or your character set is not here, mine are luckily, like I said, these two here, then you'd need to also run this command in a similar fashion for your language and country and character set that you choose. So those have all gone in without any errors, so I'll just carry on. There's an alternative, you can install every single locale that glibc has got, which would take a lot longer. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, unless you're maybe creating a distribution for global use. Um, but apart from that, I'm just going to carry on. Um, To use the local dev command to create and install locales not listed in support file. Oh, uh, right, okay, that's that's to these two commands are to use in association with this command here by the looks of it. Then we just create some configuration files, time zone data, 
So there's several commands here, I'll do one at a time. So that's all done. Now we need to select the time zone and there's this little utility to help you identify what the parameters are for your particular time zone. So it asks you what continent you're in. So for me it's Europe and then what country within that continent. So again for me it's Britain, UK. It checks that you've selected the right time zone by giving you the current time in GMT which is the local time zone and UTC which is the universal time zone and yes it is okay so I select one and it tells you what the parameters are for not only here but down here as well for the next step of the configuration so the easiest way I find to do this is to copy this command here paste it in then just use the cursor keys to go back and rub out the bit that you've got to fill in, the three X's. Double click this, it will select the whole lot. Center click to paste it in and that's it. And you can see it's created a sim link to the correct time zone that you've chosen. Got an ld.so conf file to create. And you can also get the dynamic loader to search in alternative paths as well by running that little uh, set of commands in. And that's glibc done. So I'll just carry on building the rest of the packages now.
So there's one thing to note there that there's two TCL packages. One I think is documentation, yeah. And one you want to extract to start off with is the TCL 8.6.12-source.tar.gz. And then you can change into that and you can see the first command is to extract the contents of the other archive which is the documentation and then you can just carry on as normal
So there's um, something to take note of here with GMP. It says that if you're running, uh, or rather if you're building for a 32-bit x86, but you've got a CPU which is capable of running 64-bit code, and you've specified CFLAX, which none of this concerns me in this case. Uh, but if you are building like that, that you need to invoke the configure command by prefixing uh, the command with ABI equals 32. And also the default settings for GMP produce libraries optimized for the host processor. So again, the idea that I'm creating a USB uh, stick with a bootable LFS system the idea normally you'd plug it into another machine to boot that machine. Um, as I said before, you'd probably want to install Linux from scratch or build Linux from scratch on a, on the lesser machine anyway. And especially so because of this, that GMP produces libraries for the machine you're building on. So if you're building on a machine that's newer than other machines you might boot that USB stick off of, then this is important. What it says here is to modify the install as it says here. But other than that, I'm just going to carry on doing the install. So I don't really expect to use this USB. It's just a demonstration of what possibly could be done with the Linux from scratch system. So I'm just going to carry on installing as the commands appear in the book.
Now, as the book says here, the, the ACL test needs to be run on a file system that supports access controls after core utils has been built with ACL libraries. If desired, return to this package and run make check after core utils has been built later in this chapter. So I'll do that. I'm going to make install to install ACL because it's needed now. And what I'll do is I'll open this next package in a new tab and hopefully that will remind me to come back to rerun ACL um, but then run make check to test that the installation is ok and assuming it is I'll in reinstall again because I'll know I've tested that and that it is a good compile because the tests have told me so. But in the meantime I'll carry on with libcap So um, you can enforce use of strong passwords as it says here by going to um, BLFS. Um, what I normally do is just follow the LFS book as, as it is because it's quite adequate. Um, and then if I want to move on to BLFS, I'll, I'll reinstall Shadow there with the extra dependencies to enable the enforcement of strong passwords. But especially if you were doing this as an educational exercise, um, it's not needed. Um, if you're using, if you're building LFS to use as a day-to-day -day operating system, you're probably going to move on to BLFS anyway. So it's up to you whether you want to jump to LF BLFS now and install Shadow with the extra functionality, or I would just carry on and then do it. Like I say, when when I go to BLFS, do it, just reinstall it then. But it's it's up to you what you want to do, how you want to do it. Uh, I'm not sure what this message, oh right, okay, maybe it's to do with this. Instead of using the default crypt method, use the more secure SHA-512 method of password encryption, which also allows passwords longer than eight characters. It's also necessary to change the obsolete varspool mail location for user mailboxes that Shadow uses by default to the var mail location used currently and get rid of bin and sbin from past since they are simply symlinks to the counterpart and user but if bin and s and or but sbin are prefer to be left over in path for some reason modified path in bash rc after lfs is built okay so um, that's not a problem just take the defaults as they are in, in the book and if you chose to build shadow with crack lib you'll need to run that command there Otherwise, just carry on with the instructions in the book.
So there's some stuff that needs to be read and taken heed of here with Shadow. Um, it talks about default GUIDs and user ID. Uh, to change the default parameters, you can create an etc default file and modify the default starting group ID. And it explains why there. And you can also specify whether a default mail spool file is created. Um, if you prefer that these are not created by user add, issue the following command. I can't think I've ever used them, so I normally put this set in to stop them being created. If you know that you use them or you think you might want to use them, then um, you'll, you'll want to leave that out. This password route, this will be the password for the root user when you uh, first log in and subsequently log into the new LF system. So what LFS system? So whatever you specify here, ensure you remember it, else you won't get in into your new LFS system.